Assalamu alaikum friends. Today we'll be looking at Haemophilus influenza. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. So, grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Haemophilus influenza is a small gram-negative facultative anaerobic bacterium. It is pleomorphic. Pleo means many and morph is for shape, which means that this bacterium has got different shapes. That's why I've written Coccobacillus here. It exists in two different shapes. One is coccus that is spherical and the other one is bacillus that is rod. It is not responsible for forming spores and it is not motile, which means that it has got no motility apparatus that can facilitate it to move. And Haemophilus influenza belongs to the Pasteurylaceae family. As in this picture, you can see Haemophilus influenza. Let me zoom in. Haemophilus influenza is catalase positive. If you guys do not know what is catalase, it's an enzyme that is released by certain bacteria that converts hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And then oxygen is responsible for forming bubbles. So Haemophilus influenza is one of those bacteria that is responsible for releasing catalase and catalase then converts the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. That's why it is catalase positive because we perform catalase tests. Haemophilus influenza has got two words in it. First one is Haemophilus, that means blood loving. So it needs two factors for its growth. First one is hematin, that is factor X. And the second one is NAD, nicotinamide dinucleotide, that is factor 5. And both these factors are found in blood, which helps this bacterium grow. And the second word is influenza, which is related to the infections caused in upper respiratory tract, like influenza related to flu. So this bacterium is responsible for causing pneumonia. It is responsible for causing meningitis, that's the inflammation of the three protective layers of the brain and spinal cord. Then it causes pneumonia. It also causes certain upper respiratory tract infections like otitis media, sinusitis, conjunctivitis, epiglottitis, and sepsis. We'll talk about all these infections later in today's video, so stay tuned for that. Before talking about Haemophilus influenza in much detail, we should know about the bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified into spirochetes, and it's also pronounced as spirochetes in some places. You can go with the one you like. I'll go for spirochetes. Bacteria are also classified into acid fast, based on acid fast staining. And there's an exception that is Mycoplasma bacterium. Bacteria are also classified based on gram staining into gram positive. We're done with all of them. If you guys are interested, be sure to check out the channel. And gram negative, which are further subdivided into cocci like Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Neisseria meningitidis, and also into rods, which are further subdivided into aerobic like Pseudomonas, anaerobic like Bacteroides, and Fusobacterium. And rods are also classified into facultative, which is further subdivided into curve that includes Campylobacter, Helicobacter, Vibrio, and into straight, which is further subdivided into enteric and related that includes E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. Also into zoonotic, which includes Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, Yersinia, and into respiratory that includes Haemophilus, the topic of today's video. Bodytella and Legionella. Lecture outline. We're done with the introduction of Haemophilus influenza. We've talked about bacterial classification. Now we'll be looking at the morphology of Haemophilus influenza, then its habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Here I would like to take a moment to thank Truelearn for sponsoring today's video. TrueLearn is an online study platform that is designed to help medical students and professionals. Whether you're preparing for your school exams or other high-stakes tests like USMLE, COMLEX, or NCLEX, TrueLearn could be just what you need. TrueLearn focuses on providing the users with realistic exam-like questions. All you have to do is to click on the link in the description and sign up. This is the TrueLearn's dashboard. Let's search a question. As we are studying Haemophilus influenza today, so let's write it here and search. Here we go. We've got a list of questions. I'll go for this one. The best part is you can name the test, select its time limit, type of question, 
and select if you want to tutor or not. Create the test. And ta-da, test is ready. This is the question, read the statement and answer it. If you got it right, that's great. And if you didn't, no worries. TrueLearn is there to help you. So if you're interested in signing up on TrueLearn, click on the link in the description and use my special discount code MedZohrov at the checkout. Sign up and enjoy learning. Morphology. Haemophilus influenza is small pleomorphic gram-negative bacterium. Pleomorphic, as I mentioned in the introduction, pleo is for many and morph is for shape. So, Haemophilus influenza has got different shapes. It is pink colored. The reason is it's gram-negative. Here in this picture, you can see Haemophilus influenza. Let me zoom in for you. Here you can see the raw shape of Haemophilus influenza and it is pink colored and it has got no motility apparatus like a flagella or cilia. Structure. Haemophilus influenza has got two different types of strains, ones that are encapsulated and other ones that are not encapsulated and both are responsible for causing different types of diseases. Haemophilus influenza is not responsible for forming spores. It is immortal. The reason is it has got no motility apparatus that can facilitate it to move. And it is one of the three important encapsulated pyrogens along with pneumococcus and meningococcus. Serologic typing is based on antigenicity of the capsular polysaccharide. Of the six serotypes from A to F, type B is the most important one because it is used to cause most of the severe and invasive diseases such as meningitis and sepsis. But the incidence of these diseases has greatly reduced because the type B capsular polysaccharide is used as an immunogen in the vaccine. And the type B capsule is composed of polyribitol phosphate. Unencapsulated strains cause diseases, especially the mucosal diseases of upper respiratory tract, such as sinusitis, otitis media, but are usually non-invasive. This is how Haemophilus influenza looks like under the microscope. It is cocobacillus rod. Here you can see its bacillus form, which means it's a rod. And it is pink colored because it is gram negative. It is immortal, that's why you cannot see any motility apparatus like a flagella here. Habitat. Hosts. Human beings are its host and it is specifically found in nasal pharynx. And there is no animal reservoir. Transmission. Transmission occurs by the inhalation of airborne droplets into the respiratory tract and we can term it as aerosolized transmission. Pathogenesis. Now let's talk about how Haemophilus influenza actually causes the infection. Haemophilus influenza infects only humans and as we've said it has got no animal reservoir. It enters the human body by the inhalation of airborne droplets into the respiratory tract resulting in either asymptomatic colonization or infections such as otitis media, sinusitis, or pneumonia. Haemophilus influenza produces an IgA protease, that's its virulence factor. We'll talk about all the virulence factor in just a moment, but for now let's talk about IgA protease. IgA protease degrades the secretory IgA, thus facilitating attachment to the respiratory mucosa. After becoming established in the upper respiratory tract, Haemophilus influenza can enter the bloodstream where it can cause bacteremia and can spread to meninges where it can cause meningitis. Meningitis is primarily caused by the encapsulated strains, but non-encapsulated strains are involved in most of the common infections like otitis media, sinusitis, and pneumonia. Now let's talk about the virulence factors of Haemophilus influenza. The top one in the list is its antiphagocytic capsule. The capsular type B is composed of polyribitol phosphate and causes severe and invasive diseases, specifically in OPSI or asplenic patients. The second virulence factor in the list is endotoxin that is released by Haemophilus influenza. It potentiates histamine release caused by IgE-mediated reactions or by non-immunologic mechanisms. And the last virulence factor in the list is IgA protease that we've just discussed. It degrades secretory IgA, thus facilitating the bacterial attachment to respiratory mucosa, where it can cause infections. Now let's talk about the clinical findings. First, we'll look at the meningitis. As its name shows that menin and itis, meningitis, 
as its name shows that it is the inflammation of the three protective layers of the brain and spinal cord. So it will have symptoms like fever, headache, and neck stiffness. This is its triad that's very common. If somebody has meningitis, these three things will definitely occur. And there will be drowsiness. In some cases, AMS is also found, which stands for altered mental status. Now let's talk about the mucosal infections. The top one in the list is sinusitis that causes pain in the specific sinus that is infected. And there is a pacification of that infected sinus. Now let's talk about the otitis media. It will also has the pain in the region of infection. And there will be redness with bulging tympanic membrane. Now let's look at epiglottitis. As its name shows that it is the inflammation of epiglottis, that's the part of our upper respiratory tract. It will have symptoms like fever, drooling. Drooling will occur because of the swollen epiglottis. The person is not able to swallow the saliva. There will be dysphagia because of the swollen epiglottis. Um, there will be muffled voice. There will be strider which means high-pitched wheezing sound and there will be respiratory retractions and the person will have a tripod position like the tongue will be out and the head will be forward in order to make it easy to swallow that's a natural position that patient makes and this infection specifically occurs in children epiglottis will appear as swollen cherry red and there will be some print sign on lateral x-ray on imaging. Epiglottitis can obstruct the airways. This is a life-threatening disease of young children and that is caused by Haemophilus influenza. Now let's talk about the pneumonia that is caused by Haemophilus influenza and it is caused in elderly adults, especially those with chronic respiratory disease and it will have symptoms like cough, shortness of breath, high temperature, chest pain and certain other symptoms. Now let's talk about the invasive infections. Other serious infections that are caused by Haemophilus influenza include bacteremia if it spreads to blood, septic arthritis if it spreads to the joints, cellulitis and sepsis. Lab diagnosis will need the samples of blood, spinal fluid, joint fluid, pleural fluid and middle ear aspirate. Um, actually, we collect samples from the area of infection so we can figure out what's causing that infection. Then we'll go for microscopy and on gram staining, this bacterium appears to be gram negative because it's pink colored. Shape. It is cocobacillary small bacterium which shows that it has got two shapes. One is coccus and the other one is bacillus that's rod. Color. It is pink or red in color because it's gram negative. This is how the bacillus form of Haemophilus influenza looks like. Culture. Lab diagnosis depends on isolation of the organism, the Haemophilus influenza, on heated blood chocolate agar enriched with two growth factors required for bacterial respiration, namely factor X, a heme compound, and factor 5, and that's NAD, nicotinamide dinucleotide. Why the chocolate agar is used and not the blood agar? Because Haemophilus influenza is incapable of hemolysis, which means the breakdown of blood. So instead of blood, chocolate agar is used, which is heated and lysed blood agar. And the blood used in chocolate agar, as we've said, is heated. Why is it heated? It's heated to inactivate non-specific inhibitors of Haemophilus influenza growth. Okay, uh, I'm giving you a diagnostic line, so listen to it carefully. If an organism that grows only in the presence of both the growth factors, the factor X and factor 5, is identified as Haemophilus influenza. Here you can see the culture of Haemophilus influenza. You can see the satellitism here. What is satellitism? The colonies of Haemophilus influenza surround the staph aureus like a satellite. Why does it surround the uh, staph aureus? The reason is it also grows in the presence of staph aureus. We put a straight line of staph aureus and then we colonize the Haemophilus influenza, which forms satellite colonies around it. So that's why this thing is termed as satellitism. And the colonies of Haemophilus influenza are round in shape. Definitive identification of Haemophilus influenza can be made with either biochemical tests or the capsular swelling or cooling reaction. 
Additional means of identifying encapsulated strains include fluorescent antibody staining of the organism and counter immunoelectrophoresis or latex agglutination test, which detect the capsular polysaccharide. Treatment. The treatment of choice for meningitis or other serious systemic infections caused by Haemophilus influenza is ceftriazone. And the upper respiratory tract infections like otitis media, sinusitis caused by Haemophilus influenza are treated with either amoxicillin, clavulinate, or trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. We can also use rifampin, but for prophylaxis purposes. That's why I've written rifampin in prevention. Let's talk about the conjugate and unconjugate vaccines, type B. Conjugated to diphtheria, toxoid, or other carrier proteins, that's why it is termed as conjugated vaccine. Depending on the carrier protein, it is given um, sometime between the ages of 2 and 15 months. This vaccine is much more effective in young children than the unconjugated vaccine and has reduced the incidence of meningitis. And the unconjugated vaccine is also used to prevent infections caused by Haemophilus influenza. Alright guys, now let's have a quick recap. The organism we discussed today is Haemophilus influenza. It is responsible for causing diseases like meningitis, pneumonia, upper respiratory tract infections like otitis media, sinusitis, conjunctivitis, epiglottitis, and sepsis. Mode of transmission. It enters human body, specifically the respiratory tract, via airborne droplets. Hosts are human beings and there is no animal reservoir. Diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, and culture. Culture is done in chocolate agar instead of blood agar. For treatment, we'll go for ceftriazone, amoxicillin clavulinate, and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and you've learned something. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with me on my social media, I've got my Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle Medzokhrov. And I'll see you soon in the next video. Till then, Assalamu Alaikum.